So whenever you have two functions or more functions, you can make new functions by adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So I've already added and subtracted in a different video, so now I'll multiply. The notation for the new function is just the f and g together, nothing in between them. So we're using proximity here to indicate multiplication. Again, between this and the x, though, that is not multiplication. That's just showing us that x is our variable. It's exactly what you think it is. And we're going to do it because I'm going to guess we want to practice multiplying trinomials times binomials. So here's my way. I actually have to rewrite it. It just makes me feel more comfortable. I put the binomial first. And then I always put a smart runner. And so what I'm going to do is take each piece of the binomial and run it through the second one. And running distributes. So 2x times x squared for 2x cubed. 2x times 5x. 2x times 6. And then I take the negative 3, and I run it through all of the terms. So now I'll get negative 3x squared minus 15x minus 18. And then you combine like terms to simplify. So 2x cubed, I have a 10x squared minus 3x squared. Those guys can combine. Sometimes if you have a lot of terms here, it's convenient to scratch them off as you go so you don't forget anybody. A plus 12x and a minus 15x will be minus 3x, and then a minus 18, and that's the answer. If I ask you to divide two functions, all you can really do is stack them. So there's not a whole lot to do unless it might reduce. So instead, what I get is this question, what is the domain of the new function? Okay. So now I've taken two polynomials, f and g, and I've made a rational function, right, that has a denominator that could be zero. So that's the one that we have to exclude. We need to exclude so domain has x's, exclude the x value that makes the bottom 0. So 2x minus 3 equals 0. The solution to that is x equals 3 halves. This is the x value that makes the denominator 0. So the domain, all x's such that x isn't three halves. Back up here to the multiplication problem, often what I will do is I won't actually ask you to find f times g of x. Instead, I'll ask, what is f times g of 0? Because we can find this pretty cleverly without multiplying everything together. If you find what f of 0 is, which is super easy because it just marks off every term that has an x in it. So f of 0 is 6. g of 0, same thing. 0 in for the x wipes out that term. So g of 0 is negative 3. So f times g of 0 would be 6 times negative 3 or negative 18, which, of course, since we had already multiplied out, we see here 0, 0, 0, negative 18.